Hey guys, it's Jenny from Absolute Astronomy. Today's video is going to be a little different, it's not going to be about space, it's actually going to be about mental health, seeing as it's Bell Let's Talk Day. Um, I'm not planning to edit this video, so I apologize if it's a little long, I just feel like a one take kind of thing's a little more personal, although I might end up adding some music and more dramatic effect just because, you know, that's, that's the editor in me. <laughs> so yeah, let's get started. Uh, today is Bell Let's Talk Day, so I figured I'd just share a little bit of my story with you guys and then offer some words of advice if you're going through a bit of a struggle right now. Okay, this is this is kind of weird. I've never actually talked about this on camera before, but you know, let, let's just go for it. <laughs> so, um, I've been diagnosed with depression, panic slash generalized anxiety disorder, and acute PTSD. Uh, growing up, I definitely had my ups and downs, as does every teenager, and uh, some days just tended to be a little worse than others, but I wasn't really sure about what was going on, and I was kind of in denial that there was anything wrong with my well-being, because um, at least at my school, um, we weren't really educated much on mental illness. Um, it was, you know, more so they would talk about your physical strength and your physical well-being in health class rather than what's going on up in your brain. So, um, I just thought, you know, everyone felt that way, and I didn't quite realize just how fragile my mental state actually was. So, it wasn't until I was about 17 or 18 that I actually decided to go do something about it, and I started seeing a therapist. I uh, also started taking antidepressants, I started off on Wellbutrin, and I very quickly learned that medication doesn't magically make your problems go away. Uh, and also that certain types don't exactly work how you think they will. Um, I'm not meaning to bash Wellbutrin or the company or whatever. Um, it just it just didn't happen to work for me. Um, Wellbutrin actually made things a lot worse and um, it caused me to lose a lot of weight. And growing up, I've always been very thin and that's something I've been insecure about because a lot of people used to bully me about that because for whatever reason, they don't believe that you can be naturally skinny without having an eating disorder. So I felt like shit and I didn't want to feel like shit and that's the whole reason why I was taking this medication. So after about two months of taking it, I gave up. Um, but I still kept seeing my therapist because I knew that was actually working for me, unlike the medication. So last year on January 1st, I stopped taking it as part of my New Year's resolution, if you want to call it something like that. So, um, yeah, so I continued to see my therapist throughout the year and probably around the mid, mid year mark, I would randomly start getting really bad panic attacks. And a lot of these were contributed to my PTSD, but there were times where I would just be lying in bed, you know, watching Netflix and I would start getting that feeling in my chest and then I would freak out about it and the feeling would grow. I'd freak about it even more and it would grow even more. So it was just a big vicious cycle of, ah, and, um, Panic attacks are literally the worst thing in the world because you feel like you're dying, like you feel like your heart's gonna come like ripping out of your chest. Um, so if you've never had one, be very grateful for that. And it's really shitty because you can't really do anything about them. You just, you know, have to try to calm yourself down and, um, you know, just ride it out. So <laughs> that, that sucks a lot. Um, so I would start getting these panic attacks maybe three or four times a week and each time the severity would increase, um, and it was not fun. So I decided to go back to the doctors and they brought up the idea of medication. And I was a little iffy on it just because of my previous experience with Wellbutrin, uh, but I knew that I didn't want to have these panic attacks anymore and, you know, so, oh, you can only do so much meditation or self-relaxation techniques before you, it doesn't work. So, um, and Another thing about medication is that it's not a one-size-fits-all type thing, and I think that's why a lot of people tend to give up on medication for mental illness, um, is because they expect, you know, the first one they take to be the one that works, but the reality is that you have to try different types before you find one that works for you, and that can be really shitty. And, you know, I understand why people give up on medication a lot, because I was so convinced that medication didn't work for me only after trying it once for a couple months. Um, so I was eventually prescribed Zoloft, which is a um, anxiety and antidepressant medication. Um, and I take this every day just to lower my overall anxiety levels. And touch wood, it's worked pretty well and I never had any side effects with it. So I was really happy about that. Um, 
and they also gave me some lorazepam and I would take these whenever I would start having a panic attack and it would cut it right away like it's the best thing in the world um, and I actually used maybe three pills out of the 20 that they gave me um, yeah so I only I started taking um, Zoloft probably around September I guess and um, it actually worked really quickly for me. Most medication, you know, you start to see something within about six weeks, but I saw it in about four to five, which was pretty awesome, I thought. So I, uh, ever since then, I've only had about three panic attacks, and so I just have all this lorazepam I'm just sitting in my cabinet, and I'm okay with that, because I don't, I'd rather not take as much medication. Um, and another thing about medication is that you shouldn't stay on it for too long, so I'm actually hoping by the time I finish school in April to kind of lean off of it and uh, see how I go from there. So, uh, yeah, the big picture. Um, oh, my... Okay, it is still recording. <laughs> this is the trouble with manning a microphone and then also your own camera. You have to make sure everything records at the same time. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, we're currently living in an era where the stigma around mental illness is slowly starting to disappear, and that's awesome. Um, I'm noticing more and more people, including myself, being more comfortable talking about their well-being, and that's such a great thing because it's something that we do need to talk about, and if you're struggling with some sort of mental illness, like, there's so many things you can do to help yourself, and I know it's very scary, I mean, it took me, like, four or five years to actually do something about it. Um, and in my case, I found that seeing a therapist helps a tremendous amount, and I know for some of you it's very scary to open up to someone you've never talked to before or had a relationship with before. Um, but it does help to have a fresh perspective on your situation, because friends and family are great if you want to talk to someone in the moment if you're feeling a little down and they can help cheer you up. But a therapist helps you realize things in the long run and helps offer solutions to problems that you might have never considered before. And um, like I said, with medication, it can be a bit of a hit and miss, so if you are deciding to take medication, make sure you talk to your healthcare professional about it to make sure that they prescribe you something that's suitable for your situation. And another thing to remember about medication is that it only does 50% of the work. The other 50% comes from you making a lifestyle change, and I know this is probably harder than um, actually you know, stepping up and getting help. Because I know a lot of people, like especially when you're feeling depressed, you have you don't really have much motivation to do things. But um, I find that really pushing yourself to do certain things, whether it's you know eating healthier, working out, or making a podcast, um, it really helps you take your mind off of all the things. And um, you know, medication doesn't fix everything, so it's basically about realizing what you have to change in your life to make you a better person. Um, and I don't want this to come across as harsh, but um, I think it's something that a lot of people need to hear. Um, if, you, if you are suffering from some sort of mental illness, um, you have to understand that you'll never fully get rid of it. Um, but the important thing is that you can learn to live with it and you cannot let it control your life. So if you're watching this and you feel like all hope is lost, just remember that you're not alone. And you are loved by so many people and there's so many options out there if you want to get help. <laughs> Excuse me, getting choked up here. No. <laughs> um, but seriously, like, it's not, you don't be ashamed to, you know, put your hand up and say, hey, I need help, because it's actually quite empowering to know that you're finally taking control of your life and that you're in charge to make yourself a better person. And um, I know I'm no qualified therapist, but hey, if you guys ever need someone to talk to, I'm more than willing to lend an ear. I love you guys. Take care. Mm.